Hello, I'm Ibgay Extra and on a lot of my recent videos, I've been seeing comments asking exactly where in America I'm from. This is something that really confuses me because I thought my Britishness was fairly obvious, but I figured in today's video we would dispel that myth in the best way I knew how because I wanted to do the most British thing a person can do, and that is, of course, if you're not aware, is to discover and or invade foreign lands and to claim them for Her Majesty the Queen. So in today's video, we'll be doing a special form of realm tour like we used to do, but this time, if we really, really like a realm, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be claiming it for the British Empire by planting the Union Jack down all over it. So that's what we're doing in this video, I hope you all do enjoy, you can like this video if you do like it, but let's dive straight into it. So the way this works is I receive invites to join people's worlds and or realms all the time. As you can see, I've got a huge list of realm invites right now. So I ask people to put Toy Cat somewhere in the name. And what we'll be doing is we're going to be checking out some of these realms, which people have invited me to. And then I feel like it's not really griefing. It's just kind of using my ability to make things a little bit more British as they probably would like for them to be. So anything with Toy Cat in the name, we're going to be taking and we're going to be going on to right now. So this first realm that I've joined is honestly a little bit sad looking. I mean, in the fact that like it's kind of nothing. There's just a wooden hut near spawn and another wooden hut on top of a mesa biome. I really like the seed for this place, but I'm not sure there's much else uh, that's hugely positive I can say about it. Actually, you know, as I've climbed over the hill, things are actually looking kind of pleasant here. It's a nice little village on the hill. Everyone's just enjoying their thing, leaving themselves to themselves. And they've even gone together to make this cute little, you know, like planter project where every single one of these wooden posts have some form of plant inside them. It makes for a really nice, pleasant walk, you know? You do have to say that. It doesn't go very far, but it's a nice little community. But as you can see, looking at this pretty nice house, actually, I really like the way it's built into the water source. This is built on top of a navigable waterway, which will eventually take you out to sea. It'd make for a good trading outpost, I reckon. They've even got some neverwort farming going on at the very edge of this. Actually, I really like this as an example of how to make a mesa biome much more like livable and exciting. But we are here for one reason, and that one reason only is to, uh, you know, find some outposts for the Empire. And, you know, I think this counts quite well for that. So what I've done is I've commandeered some local supplies. I've got myself some iron, some uh, bone mill, some all, all this sort of stuff, because I can make some shears of this. I haven't found any wool anywhere. And we can eventually, hopefully, make ourselves enough blue wool for a banner, which is a key part of how we're going to make the British flag. Now we just need a couple of sheep, as you can see right here. Again, doing this in survival is a lot harder than doing this in creative, so... You know, if you want to invade using banners, would recommend a creative world. In fact, if you want me to invade your world, I'd recommend putting it in creative. But <laughs> no, again, no one knows this is happening. This is just me politely touring people's worlds and then maybe also taking them in favor of the Empire. Side note, I've never seen this before in a world, but they've collected bunnies in this little pit over here. And I can't work out the reason why you'd want to do that, let alone why they have done it. But it does actually look really cool. So interesting world, more reasons to invade though. Oh, it's a rabbit farm. Who does that? Who needs cooked rabbit? Like, it's such a bad food. So since the people who, you know, live in this world are clearly savages who eat rabbits, it's kind of my duty when you think about it to, uh, you know, turn this into a much better world. So here is how you make yourself a Union Jack if you ever feel like going on a bit of a rampage yourself. What you want to do is you want to get yourself a blue banner and then you want to make some white crosses across it. It's fairly easy to do. You just go just like this and then it's easy. And then you go just like over here as well. And then... After you've made two white banners, you've got yourself a uh, salt tire, the uh, St. Andrew's Cross. This is the Scottish flag. If you want to just quit here, you can. But you know what? This isn't where we're stopping because we're going to use our poppies, make some red dye and our rose bush. Then we're going to put a nice red cross across it. This is to kind of simulate the end banner. As you can see, now we've look, got like a weird Icelandic almost looking flag, just not quite uh, sideways. Then what you want to do is throw another couple of uh, lines on this, but this time going uh, across just like this. Then you want to finish with one more red cross, but we don't have any... Uh, red with us. So I guess we've got ourselves just a slightly broken British flag until we can find that. There we go. Found some more rose bushes. Now what you want to do is you just want to finish off with a nice red cross and you should have the most delightful looking... Oh no, that's not correct. Now you add the red cross to it and you should have yourself a Union Jack looking flag or as close as you can do it in Minecraft. And now what you do is you want to claim your respective area. You're not... Let's, let's find the nicest place here. Right over there. And just like that, I think you'll find this world now belongs to the British. I mean, we've got a flag, which is enough proof for me, if, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I think, pro tip, do the uh, the cross in like a, a right and then an up. But still, we've still got ourselves a British flag. It looks British enough. And boom, we have ourselves the British Empire now established in the Mesa uh, biome, which is <laughs> a nice little thing to do. So let's move into the second world and see if that's worth colonizing, perhaps.
So this next board is interesting because it seems to have a plugin installed then that also <laughs> welcoming me directly. There's something called the crime count and I'm just confused by this whole thing. So let's press this button and see what the realm is all about. Oh, okay. Well, it seems to think I've been teleported. Oh, well, apparently I have. So let's check out the world. Let's see how it's going. So this board actually looks really solid. As you can see, they've got themselves a map on the wall right here. It's actually looking kind of great. Let's, let's tour around it. Let's see what's what. Oh, they've even got what I think is a boat away in the sky. I could be wrong, but I want to believe it's a boat away. So I'm not sure if this actually is a very good idea for boats because I mean, it's got so many sharp corners, but it's super cool. They've got like a walking ice thing like I had in one of my oldest uh, cities. So I'm a big fan of that. Anything where I'm like, oh, that's a cool idea I had but never could do, seeing it actually done is, uh, you know, impressive. They've even done something I really like, which is using survival blocks to achieve something. So in this case, you can see uh, they've used purple and like some concrete, etc., to make uh, tridents and stuff. They've all got this kind of cool feel to them. It doesn't just feel like, oh yeah, we built this pixel art and creative. No, this is survival built pixel art, and that's always more impressive in my opinion. I mean, it's always more impressive to do something in survival than creative, right? Because it's harder. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's basic facts. So over here, we've actually got a nice house, a, a model looking house we can tour. It's from I Top Him and then a heart. So as you can see, they've got a lovely modern mansion going on here. And uh, even they've got like a, their own little garage with a, a horse parked outside. I'm going to commandeer the horse, but unlike the British Empire, I think I am going to give it back by the end of the video. Don't worry. That's all good. Oh, so I've just realized right now because the host has came into the world and he just fly. He flew over there. I believe it is a creative world that just is me in survival right now. Honestly, I've always found it a bit weird when worlds do that thing. Oh, we've gone through a tunnel, it seems. Where like, you know, like they built the thing in creative, but then they sometimes play in survival and sometimes creative. It's just kind of confusing to me. I feel like you should be all creative or all survival. The mix between has never really gelled perfectly with me. It either seems like pointless or dishonest at best, but you know, it's a, it's a nice world regardless. There's a lot of fun builds, although it is a little bit work in progress. Ooh, I really like this. This is a pretty cool way to take an extreme hill. It seems like they've mined an entire section of it, or at least some decent part of it, and then built houses alongside it. Again, this is what I love about Minecraft, taking the environment and using it as a starting point, because anyone can build a nice house on flat ground. I mean, anyone besides me. Uh, but, you know, trying to use the actual environment and working towards the terrain Minecraft gives you, you know, using Minecraft's Minecraft to your advantage, that's something that's kind of hard to do. So yeah, I think this is a really great city. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of great progress being made here. It looks wonderful already and there's a lot of stuff going down. However, you know, the creative mode thing and also there's the fact that it needs to be finished makes me say, you know, what? I'm going to hold off. I'm going to wait to invade this just a little bit until, you know, like things are a bit more fledgling. So yeah, this is going to get a solid, uh, you know, five out of 10 would not invade from Toycat. <laughs> Yeah, but more seriously, it has a lot of really cool ideas, and I like it, but you're not, we're not gonna be invading any of this half-creative, half-survival nonsense today, uh, even if it is some good half-creative, half-survival nonsense. Before we go, however, I am a man of my word, so I've come all the way back here, and you know, I'm gonna put the diamond horse, or the diamond horse armor-wearing thing, back on his little post, and boom, look at that. Toy Cat doesn't steal horses and not put them back. I'm basically a saint just because I did that. So the third world we are going to be checking out is apparently a little bit glitchy, but this one, uh, you know, like claims to be the V2.0 of a project. And, you know, I'm already in love with it just looking at the spawn because you can see there's a giant insane, uh, you know, wheat farm right there, which is something I like, you know, as someone who uh, loves their insane sugarcane farm. You know, there's a there's a reasonably okay sugarcane farm here. You know, it's no toy cat sugarcane farm, but they've done all the way to, it looks like sky height, a wheat farm, which is a project I have like, you know, been intending to do for quite some time. So it's cool to see it here in the uh, the reality. You know, I really do like this world. It's a bit of a weird one, but it's, uh, you know, like I really love the functionality to it all and the fact that like, it's a really interesting form of say a, a cocoa bean farm or say a sugarcane farm. They even got a turtle farm over here. It's a lot of stuff I really do quite like. So while we consider whether or not to invade, uh, by the way, there's an end ship, that's really cool. But uh, while we consider whether or not to invade, just a, a couple of fun facts about the British Empire. One is the fact that it was actually the largest empire like that has ever existed by territorial extent. Fun fact right there, uh, covered almost a quarter of the world's surface. And you might have heard the phrase, you know, like the sun never sets on the British Empire, which I mean is, uh, you know, kind of sad because the quote at uh, the handover of Hong Kong in like 1997 was like, the sun has finally set on the British Empire, which is sad. However, it's not true. The sun still does not set on the British Empire. Uh, of the territories that the UK still claims and has control over, uh, the sun is always in the sky and will be for another like 400 or so years. Because there's a part of Antarctica that the British claim. I mean, there's a part of Antarctica that like every country 
besides like the US and China claim, but you know, like er there's a lot of countries that are claiming the an uh, Antarctica. One of those is the British, and on Antarctica, for six months in the year, the sun doesn't set. I think it's more like three months, but still, you know, point being is there's a long period of time where there's no sun setting on the British Empire, and yeah, fun fact, it's still large enough to this day, just with the islands and territories and so on and so forth, because the, uh, you know, the, the UK, the British Empire doesn't exist officially anymore, but there's a lot of territories from it that are like inherited into the UK that are just all spread across the globe. I've covered this in a second channel video, but for today, fun fact. Sun doesn't set on the British Empire. So I'm actually really liking a lot of builds around here. Like you can see there's this dragon made of purple and endstone bricks or just endstone. It's actually looking really solid given it's made from, again, survival materials. It's a harder challenge. Same with this house over here. And there's a castle over here I'm just intensely curious about because it looks great. Again, I, I love seeing survival, pro, uh, survival realms that are not just like, oh yeah, here's some impressive builds. It's impressive builds that clearly have some form of like a story behind them, some form of like a challenge, a tribulation, a trial that had to be attested to. And that's why we'll be checking this out, which is under construction right now. You know, just seeing a world that someone put together and then it technically isn't survival, that's nice. But seeing a world that, you know, someone's clearly put like months or in some cases like this one, probably years into, uh, you know, with a group of friends or by themselves, it's always cool to see and seeing some of the in construction projects that already look great is another kind of testament to that in my opinion so to go to back to my point about the sun never setting on the british empire as you can see the sun is rising right now and you know give it it just it just feels too perfect to me i feel like we need to invade this so because this world is survival actually finding the ingredients is going to be hard i've got myself one bit of wool and one stick so far so let's <laughs> look around and try and find the uh, lapis bone meal wool and rose red, I guess. In what sort of a world do you find a Tomophon dying and a saddle before you find some wool and some, you know, basic dyes? The thing everyone has too much of because they're just everywhere. Okay, so I've got some blue wool, I've got some bone meal, I've got the stick, I now just need to find myself any rose red. I actually do want to be really polite about the way I find these sorts of things. I know you might think, like, this is a form of trolling. I think trolling or griefing or whatever in Minecraft, it, you know, griefing is just being a jerk. But, you know, so, you know, like, there's a clever kind of, like, oh, yeah, you're doing something a tiny bit rude, but it's not actually, you know, like, devastating. It's not taking their time away. It's just like, oh, yeah, that's kind of a funny thing you did. That's what we're going for right here. So you want to take stuff that's not going to be noticed if it's gone. Or rather, I should say, that's what I want. Because, you know, I think that there should be more kind of, like, funny, joking playing around kind of like trolling if you want to call it that rather than the awful type where you try and ruin someone something because you know it's way more fun when both people laugh at a joke than when you laugh at a joke that someone else doesn't laugh at and no one laughs with you you know laughing at a joke no one else is laughing at used to be called being a sociopath but uh i digress this time i'm making the banner with separate uh stripes going across and then horizontally rather than you cross it should hopefully mean that when the cross goes on you can still see the white because a key part of the british flag is seeing all of that which means now, when we place this in the perfect spot, which has just been waiting for it, just over there, now you can see. The guy is, uh, you know, his name is Riley, I believe. He's killed all of the uh, the mobs in Minecraft. He's killed wither skeletons, zombies, skeletons, the ender dragon, and also owned by the British Empire. This is now British, uh, you know, it's called the Arms 2.0, so it's called the British Arms 2.0. Um, and you know what? That's exactly how I like it. So that's beautiful. Let's move into the next realm, though. So this is the next world we are checking out, and honestly, besides the rain, which is definitely not promising, and the gravel, which is definitely not promising, and the darkness, and you know, besides all the bad things, the realm is looking okay so far. It's got a nice pickaxe. I, I think I've, uh, you know, shown off this exact build before. I love it. It's a really solid way to show, like, this is a survival mining realm. Like, it's a, it's a fun little thing. I like it a lot. We, you know, things are looking promising already, but as you can see, oh man the uh, map looks like. I'm going to quickly just put that back. Again, my intention is not to grief, to ruin anything. It's just, oh, okay, okay. Oh, it's fine. My intention is not to grief or to ruin anything, and I'm not doing either of those things. I'm just going to fix this up real quick. So this is about as good as new, as far as I'm aware. I mean, it's, it's you know, I, I've made a mistake. I've made a grave mistake. Um, so as you can see, we've got the best realm rating has been, wow, we got 10 out of 10 achieved on November 16th, 2018. That was a few days ago. Like, close to a week ago. That's kind of cool, I guess. Let's go down into the, uh, the cave, though. You know what? You can say what you want about the rest of this realm and the use of gravel, but they have got a phantom inside a boat, which, I mean, he will attack you if you get inside the boat with it. But it's kind of cool that you can just sit here inside a boat with a phantom. I honestly didn't know it'd be easy to trap a phantom in a boat. I don't think it is, but you can totally just 
ride around with this guy while the dog watches you. And he's just like, well, I don't know what's going on here, man. I was just locked up, sent in a boat. I don't want to be here as much as you don't want to be here. You know, this makes so little sense because it's literally a flying mob. He's flying in and out of the boat. He's trying to do damage, like he's swooping at me right now. He's like looking. It, it's a weird thing. It doesn't make any sense, but it's <laughs> it's a thing you can find on this round. So yeah, that's a cool old cave next to spawn. But let's look around at the actual structures around here. Uh, by the way, big apologies for this. I do not have the ingredients and I couldn't find any to fix it. So again, I, I actually feel bad about that one. I don't like ruining people's worlds like a lot of people do. So their main uh, boulevard right here seems to be mostly made from like every house has a different theme. So this is like an oak house. This is the dark oak house, an acacia house, a, a spruce house, etc. It's actually a cool idea because then they loop and then it, oh, although, no, no, it's not looping. It's then it's, oh, chiseled stone brick and chiseled sandstone brick, chiseled stone brick and regular smooth sandstone. So it seems as though they're just trying to like make the same house, but as many variations as they can, which to most people sounds awful. That sounds like a lack of variety. But honestly, I kind of like it. I love seeing the same thing kind of palette swapped in and out, especially since this was all done in survival. It's kind of an impressive little thing they've done here. I think they ran out of space over there, but then they've got like a little tiny uh, kind of prismarine house over here. And I love this as like a theme for a house. I think prismarine houses is something I've never properly seen in Minecraft or at least done well, but this is a great idea to like, you know, what? I've killed a notion monument and now I'm going to take it back and I'm going to turn it into a real house. I kind of want to make one of these now. So you might see one of those come up at some point. Because it looks just so solid. It's just a regular house, but it's prismarine. It's made from a monument. So I'm loving that, if nothing else. Okay, I'm guessing, uh, you know, I'm assuming this person watches the channel because they sent in the thing based on, uh, you know, the tweets. So they follow my Twitter. They probably follow the channel. And I'm seeing a big hole over there. I'm going to guess that it's an entirely destroyed chunk. And I really want to believe I'm right. Oh, no, it's even more confusing. It's a dolphin farm. It's just a lot of dolphins swimming around. I'm not sure what they're trying to do here. I mean, I guess... You might as well track dolphins somewhere, right? The thing is, before dolphins came out, we were generally so sure they'd be useful for something. Like, you could breed them, you could get some dolphin fur, or, you know, I know dolphins don't have fur, but you get something going on. It's just kind of not the case. So while we walk around the rest of these uh, areas and check out the rest of the builds, uh, let me give you a fun fact about Queen Elizabeth II. So, Queen Elizabeth II, you know, she's a queen, and that's why you say Her Majesty and God Save the Queen. Uh, when we have a king again, you'll say His Majesty and God Save the King. Fun fact, um, but Queen Elizabeth II is not only one of the longest reigning monarchs we've had in the United Kingdom and currently the second longest reigning monarch, but if you look at a uh, list of current longest reigning monarchs by length since they started, uh, you know, right now, the world has about 50 monarchies left, you know, kings, queens of some form with some power, and, uh, you know, Queen Elizabeth uh, II is not only the first longest uh, reigning monarch in the UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, she's also the second longest reigning monarch in the world and the third longest reigning monarch because Queen Elizabeth II is Queen of Jamaica and Queen of Barbados, but like separately to her title as Queen Elizabeth II of the UK. There, there used to be different secession rules. It was a whole uh, like kind of crisis thing that there was the current queen right now, but they might have different kings from the same family that were still British, but not the same British people. It was a whole thing that could have happened, but it didn't. But then also when you look down the list, again, separate per legal personality, uh, the eighth longest reigning monarch in the Bahamas is Queen Elizabeth II. The 10th longest reigning is Queen Elizabeth II for Granada. Uh, we've got the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 19th, 20th, and 21st longest reigning monarchs are all Queen Elizabeth II. So, of the 50 or so, uh, you know, monarchies the world has, uh, a quarter of them are Queen Elizabeth II right now. So there you go, fun fact. <laughs> I don't know much about this guy or what he does in survival, but I do know that he loves putting animals inside objects they probably shouldn't go in. I mean, it's just, it's just an observation right here. Oh, look, he's made andesite creeper, a granite creeper, and a uh, uh, diorite creeper. I think this might be diorite. But man, I really love that actually. Like again, repetition for a lot of people. It seems like you know you built one thing, never build it again. But like in this form, it kind of looks like a gold, bronze, silver kind of thing, or silver, silver, bronze kind of thing. I like it a lot. Like I like seeing these sorts of things. We've even got a delightful little pixel art section. Again, when you see stuff like this done survival, it actually it's 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 a different level of impressive in my opinion. We've got a skeleton. Look how cute that one is. You know. I'm loving this world a lot. Oh man, look at this guardian right here. Oh, everything's so cute because it's made in like, again, pixel art in such tiny forms. It's a fun little project to try and make out, say. 
I guess another fun fact, in case you don't like the fact that a quarter of all monarchs alive right now are the same person, is the fact that of the, you know, 20 longest reigning monarchs you can see, again, when you look at the list, it's like Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth. It means that of the 20 longest reigning monarchs in the world right now, uh, more than half are actually the same person. Which makes no sense in any other contest, but you know, monarchies, queens, they don't need to make sense, it seems. So interestingly enough, this time I found everything I need besides a stick, so I need to just, I guess, chop down a single bit of wood. And then we've got everything we need to plant my flag. Because you better believe I want this place to be British. So yeah, I think I like this world the most. And you know what I do with things that I like? Because, <laughs> you know, I, I can make that joke enough times. But you know what I do with things that I like? I put the nice British flag on top of them. And there you can see, this is now the jewel in the British Empire. Or the jewel in the crown of the British Empire. That's what I think was the, the old name for India. Because it was such a uh, highly prized possession. I mean, even today you look at the population of India versus the UK, it's literally 20 times. Like it's, it's a impressive thing uh, to have and or uh, to exist in general. And uh, yeah, now this is that, as you can see. I actually, personally, I really love how this map looks with the nice British flag on top. Like I generally do think that adds a bit of class. Pro tip, if you make a map in Minecraft, why not put a, you know, a, a, put a Union Jack on top and show the world uh, exactly how great it can be. Another fun fact that most people don't even realize, because when you look at banners, it's very, very barely visible, but banners actually all are animated textures. They all wave in the wind a little bit. So if you look really, really closely at this one, you can see, oh, there's a little bit of lag involved when it hits the item frame, it seems. But you can see if you look really closely, it actually waves back and forth the tiniest bit, because it's a flag, it's waving in the wind, uh, unless it's on the moon, of course. But for real though, this is one of my favorite worlds I've ever checked out. I'm gonna get some rest and then, oh, what is this? Oh, it's like a mechanics garage. I'm gonna get some rest and then we're gonna bounce out to the next realm. Okay, so the next world is a creative world that says, Hi Toy Cat, please read the signs before exploring. Where I use one of the machines behind the first sign to get an... Wait. Wait, what? Where I use one of the machines behind the sign to get an... Idea for a build, you get into it with an iron trap door. Feel free to use it if you want. There's a little more behind each sign. Maybe even build something with the prompt you get. Doesn't matter where. The prompt for each build is in the chest in front of it. Or underneath the build, the signs it should be blinking. Lastly, French toast or pancakes. And if you want pizza or burgers. So first of all, French toast or pancakes. Pancakes are so solid. Throw maple syrup on them. No matter how bad the pancakes are, it's going to be pretty solid. French toast, however, is this interesting thing. Because French toast can be amazing. But I know, like, half the French toast I have in my life is just like, ah, oh, this tastes vaguely like, I guess, toast with, like, moldy egg on it. So... I'm gonna say that, yeah, French toast is a, a riskier move, so I prefer pancakes, uh, personally. And if you want pizza or burgers, a pizza burger, of course. And also, I like these, look at this, we've got like an interactive adventure going on here. So, there seems to be blinking under the path, what could it be? Uh, don't forget to go to the purple blinking arrows, and then, not fan us. <laughs> so, I should clarify before I go any further, because, you know, I kind of want to make jokes about the Sphinxes and uh, Egypt and, you know, former British colonies. Let me just clarify. I'm not like pro actually, you know, invading countries. This is a fun joke. I need, you need to get it out there. Cause some people are gonna be like, oh man, Toy Cat, don't you know? Colonialism is like bad. Yeah, no one, no one defends colonialism as like a modern day practice. Like, you know, most big countries, even including the United States have had colonies in the, the modern age, you know? It's like, uh, okay, this is a thing a lot of countries have done. Let, you know, everyone agrees, let's not do it anymore. But people still argue against it, like, oh, it's the worst thing. It's like, yeah, everyone knows it's bad. We've all stopped doing it. Like, you can complain about the past all you like, but you can't fix the past. Like, you you know, something that's already been fixed, you can't go back in time and make even worse. It's just one of those, like, boogeymen that people like to yell about, like, oh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. It's like, no, you can't just complain about the past and hope that fixes things in the present. Anyway, whatever. Just a mini rant, because a lot of people will take this and be like, oh, but don't you know, I think... Uh, colonialism is bad. It's like, yeah, everyone, everyone is on board with that idea, you know, it's a pretty, <laughs> it's, it's the opinion. It's like saying, I think racism is bad, or I think we shouldn't murder people, ideally. Uh, you know what, I'd like it if there was left theft in the world. That would be a nice thing. People shouldn't steal from each other. And it's like, wow, what a controversial thought. No, we all agree on these things. There's no point, uh, saying them. <laughs> but yeah, people invent, like, enemies to fight against for certain issues, and it's like, man... You know, like, <laughs> you could fight, like, a you, you could actually, like, you know, have, like, actual opinions on actual beliefs. But no, a lot of people, you know, are gonna... That's why the comments are gonna be really angry in this video, I'm sure. For, 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 like, a small minority of people. Just, you know, again, this is my disclaimer. You know, this is a fun joke. You know, British people don't invade things. I've gone to, like, ten countries in the past year. I didn't invade one of them. He needs to defeat the dabbing Thanos. All he needs is a diamond sword and a couple of healing potions. 
He needs your credit card number, the three digits on the back, and the expression <laughs> month and year because dabbing Thanos stole his. But you gotta be quick. Uh, what? What the? <laughs> I love this. This is like a meme redstone creation. It's Thanos dabbing, and the only way you can save him is to leave in the comments down below your credit card number, the three digits on the back, and the expiration. <laughs> I, you know, I love this. This is this is beautiful. <laughs> this this whole world is a bit of a uh, bit of a wacky idea. I like it. It's a bit of like it's it's Minecraft builds mixed with memes mixed with I'm not even sure what, but I. I do like it. So looking around the world, you can see a bunch of things that he's built based on inspiration. So like, I assume these are the three characteristics. He had to build something that was overworld based, a monster, and that's really pretty. So he built himself a pretty uh, zombie. That's a really fun idea actually for like a uh, on the cuff build idea. So every one of these builds, if you look at them, uh, they've all got like three bits of inspiration he had to use to build them. So never based object, that's really pretty. And he built himself some really pretty never warts. I, and you know, right here, this is a, I assume an overworld, a uh, mob that's really pretty for instance. You can see looking around at all these sorts of things that like, oh yeah, like it's a fun little bit of build inspiration. It's actually like, you know, looking at these makes me want to do it myself. Like, would it be fun to build based on the inspiration of, say, a uh, festive person that's poorly made? <laughs> I, I think it'd be fun to do whatever, you know, this inspiration came from. So yeah, uh, he's got a lot of weird meme builds mixed with a lot of actually kind of good uh, builds based on the suggestion. It's making me want to do some kind of awful build based on the suggestion. Wait, should we do that sometime? Try and make the worst possible version of like any suggestion we get, like end based house that's really pretty. Why are all of these builds really pretty, by the way? I feel like <laughs> that's the only ones you've gone for. But yeah, it's a bit of a weird one. Carnivorous house that's a robot. I can see the issue of what this is the first thing we went on to. So it's a house that's a robot that eats people. I can see the issue of that. It's not really a carnivore. I guess it is carnivorous. So yeah, eats people, turns them into things. So yeah, long story short, this is a really cool idea for a world. It's kind of like a a creative test world, kind of like my C1 world, the creative test world or scrapbook, or whatever you want to call it world. It's kind of, uh, you know, called C1 of these, but we're not going to invade it today. So we're going to move on to the next world, which we, oh wait, this might be the mustache man because he's got a mustache over here. Wait a minute. But no, we're going we're to bounce out of here. I think he might be the mustache man from the creative realm video. The man we've always been curious about, it's him. It's, it's re real cool. real Okay, so this is the next world, which just spawns me into a little obsidian box and says, click the TP. I wanna know what we're TPing to. Can we see it? I guess we can't. Oh, wait, it's over there somewhere, okay. Well, that's useful information. Hi, so Kat, this map was based on Nuketown from COD, Call of Duty. It was built by me on my main account, MCP Builder Guy. It was made in late 2015 and edited in mid-2017. Also, diorite is worse than gravel. <laughs> I'll agree, diorite by itself is pretty darn bad. So, yeah, this is a, uh, oh, uh, so I guess we'll be a sniper, just to see what the game gives me. Oh, interesting, so let's click to spawn. So this is a really cool made block, uh, map. It uses a lot of command blocks to make itself basically a, uh, a nuketown kind of thing. However, uh, oh, creative would want. I do want that, actually. So yeah, they've made themselves a Nuketown creative remake. They've even, one of the really, you know, nice details here is they've made like the little uh, RCXD hole. So if you wanted to drive a car around here, I'm not sure in which situation you can actually do that. But you know, the fact that they built it regardless is a nice touch. Also looking around the rest, you can see the houses are here. Even the ones just used for detail in the background. It's all pretty good stuff. I like this a lot actually. It's a, it's a Nuketown replica made inside Minecraft. And you can even see where the bomb's about to hit in the distance. I was wondering what that was, but it's uh. A bunch of uh, iron bars showing, like, I guess where a bomb's about to go down, make a big impact, and the town's gonna get nuked. Because Nuketown is like a testing range for nukes, that's why it's called Nuketown. It looks like a real town, but it's a nuclear testing site. Fun facts of Toy Cat. But no, uh, yeah, basically looking at this, you can see that, like, ah, it's, uh, it's Nuketown, but it's Nuketown in the modern world. Isn't that kind of cool? Or in modern Minecraft. I like it. So yeah, 10 out of 10, but there's not much to invade here, because it's just, I mean, it's about to be nuked, Pro tip, don't invade countries, they're gonna get nuked. So let's move into the next one. So this is the next realm we're checking out. It is uh, by Gollum Gladder, Gladiator, who made this statue, uh, and Cooper Killer, Gumball Destroyer, and Gumball is dabbing, as you can see, it's delightful. So let's look into the map now. Uh, the Gary Lever, do not touch. I mean, it says touch wrong, so I'm just gonna press it anyway. Okay, maybe we shouldn't do that. Okay, that's, that's the insane voice inside your head you do not want. So this seems to be a little bit of another multiplayer map, which is kind of sad, I can't really play it by myself. 
Oh god, so there's a lot of teleportation things going on here. Again, I, I've always uh, found- oh, so now we're a class that just can't move around. I've always found the concept behind multiplayer maps to be fascinating, but by ourselves we can't get a real feel for them. So what I'll say is, you know what, it's a nice realm. I, I like the idea here, but we won't invade it. So we've got another kind of interesting looking survival world here, but I think it's one that's been a little bit hurt in some transfer somewhere, because we're missing item frames and maps. There's a lot of things that are like halfway under construction. So maybe this is like an old copy of a world that was transferred. Maybe it broke in the transfer from 360 to 1 or 1 to Bedrock or Bedrock to Realms. There's a lot of conversions that have to go on when you're, you know, when you're dealing with the Bedrock versions, especially on consoles. Uh, so maybe that's what's happened here. But uh, you know what, I'm gonna just go ahead and say, you know what, I, for, for the purpose of this realm, I've suddenly developed a moral compass, and you know what, we've decided the British Empire is not invading anything uh, for today. Actually, wait a minute. Have the Americans beat us to it? Darn it. <laughs> now I want it. So as you can see, uh, it seems as though I was a bit late to the party. The Americans have already come in, and you know how the Americans have invaded somewhere? Because unlike, you know, peacefully raising their flags, turning into a trading colony, what you get instead is you get explosions, uh, there's a lot of uh, oil missing, and, uh, you know, there's some American flags on the door. So, that's just offended the other half of the audience that was already not offended, and, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you can see, you know, someone came through here with a lot of bombs, they blew the whole thing up, and I'm just saying, I, I don't want to point the finger at anyone, definitely would hate to point the blame at any one, one given country here. Okay, I'm gonna stop joking. I'm gonna back out and check out the last round for the day. Look, there's even American flags up there. Wait, actually, I just realized maybe this is an American base that was bombed by someone else. And given, based on the fact there are two boats here, you could argue it's a naval base. So it looks like, you know, based on my knowledge of Pearl Harbor, it looks like the US is gonna be invading a country soon uh, as retaliation for this. So this is the final round I'm gonna be checking out today. It's called Cookie Cove MK4, it seems, as in Mark IV. This is the fourth time they've tried to make a cove full of cookies. And there is a Dearest Leader home, a jail, a PvP battery out, and a town. So we'll check out the Dearest Leader house, which should be my house. Okay, this is definitely creative. Oh, I'm literally in creative. But this is the trippiest way I've ever seen end portals used. I didn't honestly know you could do that. Also, the uh, the glowing obsidian. I mean, you don't see that very often either, do you? Oh man, that's that's weird. Yeah, it's... <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, not only a, uh, not only a, a creative world, but also a, a modded world, I guess. Because, again, this is just so crazy to see. Again, you can't make blocks like that normally, that just take up the whole thing. But they've done it anyway, so that's nice, I guess. So let's put the house back together, just so we're absolutely sure. No damage has been done here, and let's look at the rest of this. So, as you can see, there's a few nice houses here. We've got a giant statue of a castle crasher, so... Uh, if you don't know, that's like one of the Skin Pack 2 skins. Again, it's one of those signs that someone is a old console edition player that's moved to the Bedrock version now. Uh, you know, like, because, uh, you know, start the channel on console, I, I recognize these little things. We've got a snowman, oh god, okay, we've got, we've got something over here, which is, I guess is like a, an infinite loop for snowmen to roll around. I'm, I'm not sure about any of this, but it's kind of interesting. We've got a huge castle thing under progress there, and just in general, this world is weird. We've got the start of a roller coaster, but not quite a finished one. You know, I'm gonna say, again, oh, I, after, uh, you know, suddenly not having the uh, the military might or the places worth colonizing, I have decided that we are gonna stop invading places today because I just have a, a huge moral compass I've developed just now suddenly. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm joking, of course, uh, with all this sort of stuff. I hope you all enjoyed this video, checking out all the different realms. I thought the twist of invading the ones I liked and kind of having a, a fixed uh, definition was pretty cool. And now we've got three new, uh, you know, trading ports in the Empire, which is kind of nice. Uh, which, uh, of course, we can go back and check at any time. If you did all enjoy this video, I'd appreciate a like or something. If you want your world to be seen, because, of course, at the end, we've got to do the important announcement and say, look, this series is fun, but I get people non-stop complaining about it. One, because I didn't check out their world because they didn't put Toy Cat in the name. Or two, I did check out their world and they didn't like how I checked it out. It just wasn't good enough for them. Or three, it's like, hey, Toy Cat, uh, you know, realms are expensive. I already used my free trial. And it's like, look, this is just the best system we have available. I recommend using your free trial to send in a map when I recommend on Twitter. Uh, you know, if, if you use up your free trial, I'm sorry about that. If you don't have a realm subscription or a way to get one easily, I, I'm sorry about that too. But the, the idea of this was meant to be it's a fun way to check out realms, but people just use it as a non-stop source of like, you know, like it, it becomes one of the things that people like complain about, ask about non-stop. And it's like, look, I, I know you've got a good world. I'd like to check it out sometime. But we'll put the series on temporary hold for now. Uh, and if you want to know when it comes back, make sure you follow me at IBX Toy on Twitter. I hope you did enjoy the World Tour video. I thought it was kind of fun, a good way to mix up and kind of end the series. 
again, uh, if you want to see more of these, make sure you have Bell Toy Cat. You saw how many worlds had Bell Toy Cat in them? That's subliminal messaging to let you know that you need to hit that bell so that you can see more of these videos. Oh, you can't even go inside them because they're put on blocks. Oh, that's weird. Oh, this is the weirdest thing. But yeah, um, make sure that you do hit subscribe and notifications turned on. Obviously, the videos recently, I've been having a lot of fun with them. And if you want to see more of those, uh, then the best way to let me know is to, oh, is to like the video. And the best way to actually see them is to turn on notifications uh, either here or on Twitter because that's where I recommend. Oh, this is so cool. Look at that. It's just the, oh man, this is, this is the trippiest thing I've ever experienced. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.